Hey, this is Joe with Grow It, Build It, and today I'm going to tell you all about sunflowers, in particular the original wild native sunflower, Helianthus annus. So what you're looking at is the original native wild sunflower. This sunflower is what spawned all these other varieties that you probably are familiar with, the Russian giants, the mammoths, they're all cultivars of this species. It's one of the easiest plants to get genetic mutations and cross and hybridize, which I'll show you later in the video more on that. But why do I like the original wild native sunflower so much? Well, there's a few differences which we'll go into, but what I'm gonna show you is a complete profile on this plant. We're gonna cover why you should grow it, what are the key differences between this and the ones you may be more familiar with in people's yards, how to ID it, the growing conditions, how to grow it from seed, save the seed with uh, some new tricks, wildlife pests, deer, rabbits, garden uses, how to keep them from flopping over, and then we'll review. So after you watch this video, I'm guessing that more than a few of you will decide to give it a shot and grow this sunflower just for its beauty, wildlife, and interest it can bring to your yard. This is really a nice one to grow. All right, well, let's have a closer look. So why you should grow the native wild sunflower. Number one is beauty. This will make a massive display of yellow blooms that just pop with color. A tall branching specimen that sways back and forth in the breeze is pretty hypnotic. The next reason is the bloom duration. This plant will look very showy for three to four weeks. You'll get this super bloom of dozens and dozens of those yellow flowers. And it starts roughly in August, so mid to late summer. But it's gonna keep putting out isolated blooms after that until frost. So you'll keep getting all the benefits of the wildlife. And actually, that's the third reason is wildlife. Numerous bees, butterflies, and birds will all be attracted to your yard with this plant. And you'll have birds perch on this thing into the winter, and birds really do love the seeds of this. You won't be able to get any yourself unless you're quick or clever, which we'll talk about at the end. The next reason is the ease of growth. This is a no-care showstopper, so it's really not fussy. Just give them full sun and a little bit of water, and they will grow like weeds. Got bad soil? No problem. The plants growing in this mound right here are living in some of the orangest soil you've ever seen that is devoid of organic matter. Native sunflowers just don't care. They'll grow six to 10 feet tall and put out 50 blooms. I don't know why. They might just be better at uh, photosynthesis efficiency. I'm not sure. The last reason is free plants for life. This plant is gonna produce a lot of seed and it will self seed too. It doesn't self seed in that aggressive a way, but you're gonna have plenty of plants to keep your area going. I bought seed from my plants in 2017 and I've never needed to buy it since. Some years I just grow new plants from saved seed. Other times I will dig up seedlings. Actually, my wife did most of that last year and it looked great throughout the summer, but we'll see that later. All right, so let's go into the differences between the native wild sunflower and the more common ones that people grow. Many people around the world grow sunflowers and it's not hard to understand why, but most of what they do grow are those singular stalked giant bloomed varieties like the Russian giants, the mammoth sunflowers. So what are the main differences? Well, height. Wild sunflowers tend to be a little shorter when grown side by side. Most wild sunflowers are gonna be six to eight feet tall compared to 10 to 12 feet for the biggest ones. Although exceptions do happen, the shape. The shape of a wild sunflower is multi-branching, almost like a large shrub kind of, as opposed to the singular stalk varieties. The next one is blooms. The wild sunflower makes a lot of smaller two to five inch daisy-like blooms as opposed to a single massive dinner plate size one. And then finally is the bloom duration. Those large gigantic sunflowers that have a single massive bloom, they really look great, but only for about a week or so. Then they'll, they're done, they'll start to wilt. The native ones will bloom in a showy way for three to four weeks, and they'll continue to put out individual blooms until frost. If you guys are liking this footage and the information I'm providing, give me a thumbs up. It really does help my channel out quite a bit. And before I forget, this entire video does exist in article form at our website, growupbuilder.com. I will link to it down below. So if you're looking for a quick reference later, you can jump back to that. So just put it in your favorites if you decide to grow this later on in a couple months or so. All right, so let's talk about physical description, ID, growing conditions. So what is a native wild sunflower? Well, it's an annual, meaning you're going to have to regrow them each year as it won't survive the winter. The native range of this plant is primarily anything west of the Mississippi River, although it's listed as native in the whole continent, but it's believed that the Native Americans transported it throughout the whole continent as a food source. And there are actually many uses for this plant. I'm not going to cover that in this video, uh, but I may in a subsequent video in the future. It's going to grow three to nine feet tall, depending on the conditions, and branch many times. 
So these plants should be spaced two to three feet apart. The stalks are gonna be uh, hairy, like little tiny hairs, and red and green in color. The leaves are dark green and alternate up the stalk. They're gonna be around eight inches long by nearly as wide with a lancelet or a teardrop or egg shape. They'll have veins and be serrated edges usually, and if you feel them, they're very rough textured, similar to the cup plant. It actually feels very similar to like 400 or 600 grit wet or dry sandpaper, if you've ever felt that. The numerous branching of this flower will produce lots of blooms. They're daisy-like, yellow, two to five inches diameter. Uh, so they're a little bit smaller, but there's a whole lot of them. And in the wild, they're gonna produce like, you know, five to 20 blooms. But if you cultivate it out in the open, they can produce huge numbers. They really make an impressive sight. And for growing conditions, sunflower, as the name would indicate, should be grown in full sun out in the open. That's gonna help keep the plants upright, which I'll go into more detail at the end. But the more sun these plants get, the larger the plants will get. The more blooms they're gonna produce. As far as soil goes, you can grow it in a variety of soils from clay to rocky soil. The preference is for fertile loam. In regards to moisture, it can take slightly dry to slightly moist, so it's very adaptable. It can grow just about anywhere except for a swamp or a desert. It may shed some of its lower leaves during times of drought, which that's common, so don't be afraid if you see that happening and it's been hot and dry. Growing this plant from seed is very easy. It needs no special uh, pre-treatments of any kind. In spring, once the temperatures begin to warm up, you can plant the seeds directly into the soil. Do it in pots at the same depth, just regular potting soil. Keep them moist and you should be able to expect germination within a week or two, as long as the soil temps are warm enough. Once seedlings get a couple sets of leaves, it's time to transplant. Growth is gonna be slow until about July when it will just speed up. Now, whether it speeds up because it's developed enough root mass or the temperatures are just so hot then that it just grows faster, I'm not sure. But you know, to give you an example, these plants here are in the first week of July and here they are in August. So they've gone from two feet to six feet. Blooming generally starts about mid to late summer. I'm in zone six and that is the first or second week of August typically. The super bloom is gonna last for about a month. It's very, very showy. After that though, you will get continual blooms, you know, just not showy, but continual blooms up through frost and when the plant eventually dies. Okay, so if you've been inspired by what you've been seeing, I will put a link below to the where I bought my seed back in 2017. It's the same company, they're still selling the seed and I buy from them every year, different species, and it's always good quality in my experience. To save seed, in September, when the blooms begin to fade and the petals droop a little bit, it's time to think about saving seed. I do have a video detailing this, but I'm probably gonna delete it because I have a much better way now. What you're seeing here is a little mesh bag with a drawstring. I bought a pack of these last year and they are outstanding for saving large seeds. Basically, once the petals start to fade, you put the bag over the bloom, tie it off, and then come back a couple months later. Then just remove the seed head from the bag and uh, rake out any remaining seed that's in the seed head. But as you can see, there's a lot of seed that's just loose in the bag there. So it's really nice. To separate the chaff, I've got a new trick here. It's kind of like panning for gold. So maybe we'll call it that, the panning for gold method. But basically put the chaff and the seed mixture onto a paper plate and gently blow onto the plate. The air is gonna move the lighter chaff off, leaving the heavier seed. It's a great way to get most of the chaff out so you can easily separate the seed. I used to always do this outdoors in the breeze, but sometimes the wind gets a little aggressive and blows the seed away too. So doing it indoors like this worked really well. I wanna talk a little bit more on self-seeding. So I don't want anyone to get afraid of how much this thing will self-seed. What you're looking at here is a corner of my actual vegetable garden. And I started two plants there back in 2017 and I've had volunteers every year ever since. It doesn't seem to interfere much with our vegetable gardening and we like looking at them. But what you're seeing here is volunteer seedlings in the spring. It's really probably about 30 seedlings that we have this year and it would take you all of five minutes to pull them if you didn't want any. We dug a lot of them up and spread them throughout the yard. Also on the mound that you're looking at here, there's about six or seven plants and I only planted three of them. The other ones were volunteers that I just let go because I know what the seedling looks like. So it's not really a problem to identify. And that way the plant's just gonna grow faster because it's never getting transplant shock. For wildlife, bees are the main pollinators of the wild sunflower and you will see lots of them. They really love the pollen and nectar. Honeybees, mason bees, digger bees, bumblebees, they all love it. There's so many insects that love this plant. For butterflies, there's a variety that you will find on the plants, and there's several species of caterpillar that will feed on the foliage too. This year, I had a whole lot of monarchs on my plants, which was kind of nice, and this one really let me get close. He was a very good subject. 
And finally, I spoke about birds going after the seed, and they do. They love the seed. You will have birds come in there to get the seed until it's gone, basically. And even still, if you leave it up at the end of the season, you're going to have birds perch on there just periodically. We left one of our sunflowers up all winter just because we liked watching the birds land really close to a window. All right, let's talk about deer and rabbits. As far as deer and rabbits are concerned, they are a major threat to young seedlings. They really like to eat them, and seedlings can't survive that, really. Heck, even if you plant seeds directly in the ground, there is a risk of squirrels, mice, or voles digging up the seeds to eat them. They can smell them. When the plants get a little bigger, rabbits are no longer a threat. And there are some sources that say that sunflowers are generally deer resistant, but I have not found that to be true. Deer will top the plants if you don't protect them. Here's examples of that happened to me when the plants were five or six feet tall. To protect them though, liquid fence is very reliable and it works. You just have to keep up with it. I've used it for years. I'll have a link to it below. For garden uses, these are large plants. They can look beautiful by themselves as a single specimen because they put on such a display. But they're even more impressive when you cluster several of them together. It's kind of like a forest looks more powerful than a single tree. This past year, my wife planted them all over our yard seemingly. And we have this row of white cedar trees here. She planted one in between each pair of trees and it looked really great. They can be used in formal flower beds, but they need to have enough space. They're really dramatic and showy and they do a great job of attracting wildlife. So it's really a great plant to have. You should try to find a use for it. Okay, now I wanna talk about sunflowers falling over or leaning. And this is something that's important to know because it can happen if you don't plant them right. And even still it can happen. But let's talk about leaning first. Sunflowers will grow vertical when they're out in the open. When they get sun from all directions, or at least in the morning and the afternoon, they'll grow vertical in my experience. If they only get morning sun though, or only afternoon sun, they may grow towards the sun only, which will put a lean on them. Also, if you plant them very close to structures where there's not enough wind exposure, the stalks won't be as strong and they'll be more prone to leaning and or tipping over in storms. Let's talk about them tipping over. These are large plants with a lot of leaf area. So in high winds, like a tornado or just a severe storm, you can lose your plants. The best way to mitigate that risk or minimize it is to, again, grow them out in the open where they get blown around from every direction. Wind blowing on plants strengthens the stalks. It's like lifting weights as the stalk has to resist the wind. It just makes it stronger. Also, to stop it from blowing over is try to make sure it's in dirt, not mulch. Now let's look at an example of what I'm talking about. These plants you see that are knocked over, these are my plants, they're in brand new flower beds that were heavily mulched that year, four to 10 inches of mulch. They did not survive the storm, or they were knocked over in the storm. I had to stake them back up. Some I lost outright, some I was able to save. For a counter example, this is the mound and there is a thin layer of mulch here, maybe two inches. So the seedlings I did plant in here were directly into dirt with just a little bit of mulch around the base. The roots of flowers will hold on to soil with good soil structure better than something that's more loose and mulch. So just be aware of that. All right, let's talk about hybridization, cultivars, genetic mutations. Sunflowers, Helianthus uh, anus in general, is very prone to having genetic freaks, genetic mutations, uh, just crossing with other varieties of sunflower. I grew wild sunflowers next to a couple of like the mammoth giant ones and I saved seed for my wild sunflowers. The seed looked like regular wild sunflower seed. It wasn't huge, but I got this guy. So this one obviously crossed with the mammoth giant and produced a like a 10 foot tall stalk with about three or four smaller blooms on it, which was kind of weird. But at the same time, I had this other one that looked absolutely gorgeous. I nicknamed it my Christmas tree sunflower because the branching was more like a tree or a Christmas tree. I saved seed from my Christmas tree sunflower, so we'll see what it looks like in 2021. Hopefully it didn't turn around and cross with something else. All right, for diseases, there really aren't many things that seem to affect sunflowers. They can get powdery mildew, but it generally happens once the blooms are already fading. It's, and it's only cosmetic, so it's really not gonna hurt anything, and I don't think anyone's gonna judge you over it. I certainly won't. And that's pretty much about it. Let's review what we've covered here. The wild sunflower is a beautiful sunflower to grow. It branches a lot and produces tons of blooms that last for about a month for a super bloom. And then you'll get a lot of smaller isolated blooms until fall. It will grow three to 10 feet tall in full sun with medium moisture, but it's pretty adaptable. And obviously the more sun, the taller it's gonna get. It's very easy to grow from seed and will self seed to some degree. And it attracts a ridiculous amount of wildlife to your yard. 
and it also has many ornamental uses around the garden. Please click the thumbs up button if you like what I'm doing here because it helps me out quite a bit and I really appreciate it. If you guys have any questions, please ask them in the comments. I will do my best to answer them. Also, check out our article for a quick reference on this awesome plant and you guys all have a good one.